And so again tonight, uh, shepherds, that theme is going to be heard many times tonight, and the higher calling that those shepherds received, and as we think about what that means for us today too. Um, I, I just want to start though too with that uh, little just introductory question. What's your favorite Christmas tradition or activity? And I got a couple answers here from a few people that said... Uh, Family dinner, Christmas Eve dinner with family. Anybody going to have dinner tonight, maybe? <laughs> Anybody like that? Probably just a few of you. All right. Uh, Hillary said we love walking or driving around to look at Christmas lights. I went to Peacock Lane last night. Anybody been to Peacock Lane in Portland? That was cool. That was cool. Good, good, good lights displays around here. Uh, Tammy said making Christmas cookies. And Grant said Crystal likes hanging Christmas lights with her dad. All right, that's a good tradition. Anybody else? Anybody want to shout out a, a cool tradition or something you like to do? That I've mentioned quite a few, so I don't know if there's anything else to say. But there's got to be something. I didn't. Eggnog. See, I wasn't wrong when I shouted it out. Good, good deal. You know, it's only around a short time, so right, you got to enjoy it while it's here. Okay. Anything else? Yep. I appreciate the ability just to get together and sing. To get together and sing. Singing carols. Singing carols, telling others about God's great gift, and thanks for being out there. We had some carolers out there before each service, and that's, that's been nice. Great. All right. Well, you know, all these things that surround it, whether it's uh, fun stuff like eggnog and food, or we think about the deeper things about family and God's love, uh, it all centers on Jesus. And uh, we wouldn't have any of these things, even in our cultural, even the Christmas light displays and all, all those things, if it weren't for Jesus. And I think our, our world sometimes glo you know, glosses over that and just gets right to the, just this you know, holiday stuff. But it all centers on Jesus and what was received and heard even that very first uh, Christmas night. It all gets down to that. And... And how Jesus came in such a humble way to all that would receive him. During this December uh, series called Worship His Majesty, uh, or uh, we've been talking about uh, Witness His Majesty. We've been talking about how the first people that, that experienced Jesus included people like Mary, Joseph, uh, shepherds, and the prophets even that spoke about, about Jesus so long ago. So now tonight the shepherds, this higher calling, they had a higher calling than they ever could imagine and I'm going to read now from Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the Christmas gospel, the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So witness his majesty, this theme, and what was the experience of those who, who, were the first, who first encountered Jesus that we just read about here in Luke 2. And it's always interesting to both go back into history and think about these people and who were these shepherds and and uh, what's the real truth about who they were? And, and interestingly enough, these shepherds may have been carrying out some religious higher calling, let's just say duties, 
keeping watch over the flock of lambs that would be for the temple sacrifices, that Passover. And, and it's important to remember as we think about these people uh, that were real people, uh, people like the shepherds, uh, not just a cute little part of a, a legendary thing that you see in, in nativity scenes and things like that, but real people whose lives were deeply impacted when they saw Jesus and witnessed his majesty that first Christmas. Real people, real life, family, all these things that they had, normal things that they had experienced, and then they experienced in this amazing way God in Christ through the angels. And then they told everybody. These first-hand witnesses couldn't help but tell everyone they saw. And, you know, we hear a lot about shepherds, and we think about, you know, these ragtag, you know, stinky, smelly shepherds that were out there in this time and era just out on the land and trying to take care of these, these, uh, these sheep. And, yeah, okay, that's probable. They were probably in that kind of pretty just really hands-on, gritty-gritty role. Some of you have been out taking care of animals on the farm. You know, yeah, it's dirty work. <laughs> you got to work hard, right? But uh, even though, look at the role that they, they, that they were had. Uh, shepherds that, yeah, they were probably poor and simple, but uh, fulfilling these temple duties, uh, not just out in the random wilderness, but close to Bethlehem, uh, and working with the priests, uh, taking care of the lambs before the temple sacrifices, and making sure then that they were without blemish and completely unharmed as they had to be before being sacrificed. One other just interesting thing, I was just kind of looking into this a little deeper, um, uh, that you remember that phrase that we just read, uh, they were looking out, watching over their flock by night, and oftentimes there would be a tower in these fields, these special fields, the tower of the flock, uh, just outside of town within the temple priest's fields area, kind of a lookout tower. So there would be one of the guys looking out over the flock by night, other guys were on ground keeping watch, and just thinking about that, looking out over, over this time and this place. And uh, service to the church leaders, the Pharisees, and, you know, all these things that they were doing, but yet they were still shepherds, simple shepherds. And the angel showed up with this good, good news. And I'll read again uh, as I read from verse 11. Uh, Today... In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. It's news that the Savior of the world was finally born. In a moment, I want to show you a short clip that illustrates, I think, pretty well what we just read, at least the very initial encounter of the shepherds with the angels. And uh, there's not a lot of words. We've just read the words and how this, the angels spoke to the shepherds. So just think about what they said. So you're just going to see this scene. And it's actually from um, the chosen it's from season one of The Chosen, uh, one of the very first episodes about the birth of Jesus. That's pretty appropriate. First one would be that way. And uh, we, like I said in my announcements, we're looking forward to season two. We're going to be watching that here in February, so you might want to uh, wait before you watch it and come and join us for discussion and Bible study on that. But uh, let's watch uh, this scene from this early episode of what it may have been like for those shepherds to hear this earth-shaking, life-changing news from the angels. Let's watch. Shepherds fully understood what was going on, but God was doing something very new and amazing. He was up to the, this new thing. Will you perceive it as we see uh, and throughout the scriptures? God's continually doing a new thing. And this reminder, to you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And they were the first to know. They probably understood and received more than even all these, you know, uh, elite religious leaders could understand at this time. And I love that phrase that we see that uh, right away yeah, that I already read, this phrase, let's go to Bethlehem. How many of you have heard an athlete when they're trying to cheer on their team, they, they speak it out as loud as they can, right? let's go. And the, where did that phrase start? Right here. <laughs> Luke chapter 2, let's go, let's go to Bethlehem. And they went as quickly as they could, and they told everybody 
about Jesus. They could have said, oh, let's just wait and see what's going on. Uh, we're not dressed appropriately. I, you know, they don't, people don't really want to see us shepherds around. But say, let's go and see this thing for ourselves. Uh, and these priests, they ran with haste. And, and uh, uh, I can only imagine, as, as you kind of have depicted there, how just their jaws would drop and they, their jaws would drop and they see this baby uh, lying in this manger, just as the angel had said, and responding. I think a lot of times we miss out on what God has for us because maybe we don't respond appropriately. We don't just go when God says go, when we hear him say us, tell us to go. And that, as we see in the gospel reading, it's like they hurried to the village, they found Mary and Joseph, and then they told everybody. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. And in this time, think about this time, and what were the people hoping? They were hoping that somebody would come and they would militarily, with might, just overthrow Rome, these evil oppressors of the people. But Jesus wasn't coming to overthrow Rome. He was coming to die for the sins of the world. For you and for me. And I'm going to show, this is a whole lot shorter clip. I'm going to show one more little clip that shows what happened maybe when, when they announced this word and, and uh, this, this lowly shepherd that had already been, if you watch the whole scene of, of this episode, you'll see that it had already been reprimanded by the high up priests, but then he came back. Let's, let's do one last uh, little glimpse here. He starts to get it. I've seen the one, the promised one, that the prophets had written about. They, they saw Jesus, this ultimate sacrifice, the perfect lamb. And as we go back, go further into the Gospels, in John chapter 1, about 30 years later, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And this was the Christ, the promised Messiah, that they had heard about from the prophets, the Savior of the world was born, doing away with all these sacrifices. Jesus would be the ultimate, perfect sacrifice to pay for our sin once and for all through his death and resurrection. We don't know exactly how these shepherds interacted with others and the religious elite, but God came in Jesus to all that would receive him and the message of the Savior, and they, these shepherds couldn't help but tell others. And I'd like to bring it back to you and to me today, because what about you? What about me? What's your story? The name Jesus means God saves. He desires to draw all people to him, and he invites you and me to him today. And as these shepherds witness this amazing real event, and witness the majesty of God. It's like a story worth telling. And I believe any time God does anything in a person's life, it's a story worth sharing with other people. Amen? And God wants us to share our stories about him and how he's impacted, influenced, changed our lives from the inside out. We serve a, a miracle-working, a story-loving, story-writing God. It's writing a story in your life today. And as we think about Jesus and the focus upon him, Hebrews 12, 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And the author of our faith, that's who Jesus is, the author of our faith stories. And authoring our faith story uh, and that may give him glory, may point to the glory of God. And so everything points back to Jesus and uh, we see this in the shepherds, uh, in this uh, birth narrative of, of Jesus' story. They're telling their version of the story of what they saw, heard, and witnessed that focused on Jesus. And you and I, you know, like we have a main role, right, in our story for our life about you and me. Uh, but the true star and script, author of the script of your faith story is Jesus and what he has done. Just like the shepherds pointed people to Jesus, how can our lives point others to Christ? So if you want to star in your own movie, your own faith story, no, sorry, <laughs> that stars is Jesus. And John emphasized this also in his gospel in John 3.30 where he says, he must become greater and I must become less. 
Uh, and then another person anonymously once said this, said, more of Jesus and less of me is a good thing. Okay, can you agree? I believe so. So sharing your story. And I want to leave you with this last calling as you think about hearing and receiving the news and then sharing that. Uh, there's an author by the name of Doug Fields. He, he has a resource called The Second Greatest Story Ever Told. Right? We've witnessed and seen and read about the greatest story ever told in Jesus. But he talks about this. How can you organize your thoughts around the chapters of your story and that you might retell it and to others in your life? So he uses these three words, before, how, and since equals my story, my faith story. Such as, what was your life like before you knew Jesus, before you became a Christ follower? How did you become a Christ follower? What happened that led you to Christ or that rekindled that fire that maybe grew dim? And then thirdly, what has happened in your life since you became a follower of Jesus? That's your story. Simply put down in those three things. It's in your little outline if you want to recall it later. And that's what it means, telling the gospel. We're going to hear more from uh, uh, Pastor Gary, too, later in the new year about evangelism and sharing your story. So thank you, Pastor Gary, for offering that. I think we're going to be going through some good things in 2022, let me just say. But sharing your story about how you've embraced faith in Jesus and uh, whether you've had a great transformational from darkness to light story or whether you could say, well, God's been a part of my life almost since all I can remember, but here's how God has moved. Through faith in Christ, you have a story that's worth telling and the world needs to hear. So today we have the same message as the shepherds did. And we need to share this message and it's never been more important to be shared. It's never been more needed by the world than today. We know people that are hurting. We know people that have lost their jobs, sickness. Maybe you have a loved one that's going through illness. And some people are just very depressed. Maybe you've suffered through some or even all of these things, especially in these heightened past couple of years. We need to tell people that there's hope. We need to tell people that a Savior has been born and they don't have to be afraid. That's why Jesus has come. He's been born. He walked this earth. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead and offers this gift of life, eternal life, a Savior. So I'll ask you tonight as we conclude with a few thoughts and questions and prayers, uh, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? More than a baby and a nativity scene, do you know Jesus the Savior, the Messiah? He came for you and me to die on a cross for our sins, the sins of the world. He rose again and he's coming again. As you think about the story, the true account of what Christ, God has done in Christ and bringing him to this world, as you think about your story Think about these questions with me. What do you believe makes the good news from this Christmas account from Luke good? What makes it good for you? Talk about that with others, maybe even tonight. Who do you know that needs to hear the good news of the birth and life of Jesus? Maybe you're saying tonight, I need to hear that. I need to receive it. But who do you know? And will you share your story with one person this week? It might be the best Christmas present that you could ever give. It would be.